Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a good video for you today. It's about Takashi 69 and his whole case, in my opinion. A lot of guys have been asking me for my view on this whole case. So I went through it pretty good and I'm gonna give you my true opinion. If anybody who doesn't know me here, or if you're just looking at this, I spent 11 straight years, four 12 year sentences in federal prison. I wouldn't tell on a lot of people and uh, I ended up beating a life sentence. Now I have the not only this YouTube pro, uh, channel, I also have the Reality Check program which helps young people stay out of prison and make better choices. Now I'm going to get into this whole case here and I think it's going to be pretty good what we're going to do here to show you guys exactly what this is all about. Before I get started, check me out on uh, all the platforms, Patreon, uh, YouTube member programs, check my book out, Gangster Redemption, you'll learn a lot there, even about this case, because it has a lot of similarities, meaning prison, and also uh, check out merch out, we got some pretty cool merch, uh, there's a great shirt I should be wearing during this, it says, three can keep a secret if two are dead. Alright, let me get into this case, and he, I did a lot of research on this Takashi 6 9 guy. His name is Daniel Hernandez. He's from Brooklyn. The, the lowdown of his case is he, he was a member and he admitted to this of the Nine Trays. It's a gangster, you know, gang out in New York and uh, probably all over. And he ended up snitching on him to get off a sentence. He was going to get a 47 year sentence. And he's still been in trouble. And when I say trouble, he thinks he could just walk around like nothing's going to happen. Now listen, I don't uh, uh, support violence. I don't support any of that now. I was pretty bad when I was a young guy. And I, listen, the case is pretty wild. This kid became famous in 2017. He's a rapper. You know, the kid had a rough upbringing, which, you know, I understand. His dad was murdered and he ended up selling drugs to support his mom, which is... I, I hate to say admirable, but he did what he had to do, and uh, I don't knock anybody for that. Where I kind of have my issues here is what happened after he gets in trouble with a conspiracy. Now, there's a lot of stories of what happened, what not, but I'm going to go into some of the people on his case and what their sentences are, or where they're actually now, and you, you're going to see the case. Obviously, they charge this kid with, uh, after a five-year investigation by NYPD, ATF and Homeland Security. That's so that's a federal investigation, number one. So when they get their, their teeth in you, they really want you. We know that. He was arrested in 2018 related to racketeering, weapons possession, and conspiracy to commit murder. In 2019, he took a plea which involved testifying against or snitching on his co-defendants. He was looking at 47 years in prison. His sentence was reduced to two years in prison and he ended up serving half of that. He also had thousand hours of community service, $35,000 fine, five years supervised release, so he is on that supervised release. They Obviously, they, he still got money. When he got out of prison, he bought a Mercedes McLaren P1, a $2 million car. He also bought a Rolls Royce for $300,000. Nothing wrong with that. A chain that cost $750,000, another jigsaw chain for $300,000, a nice Rolex for $100,000. Makes me want to believe who did he protect, if he did protect or didn't steal us. Uh, on somebody I don't know the whole case on that you know what they did to him as a kid and you know this kid was a street kid so I kind of like uh, a little bit confused why he he caved so pretty much quickly now you're gonna hear rumors what uh, other people say maybe they were gonna get him or uh, they they labeled him as the leader or something like that he all he did put he offered 20000 to shoot at another uh, rapper, and that happened. Then they had a meeting for $10,000, all this. this is, so there's a lot of rumors, all of that, what's going around. But here's the case. You know, his co-defendants, a lot of them got, I think the most was 15 years. I didn't see any of them with life. I could tell you the prisons they're in, they're in FCI school kill, which I was at. Allenwood, which was my brother was at. Laredo was my brother at. Fort Dix, no, it's a low. Coleman, I was in Coleman. Uh, Hazelton, Canaan, Allenwood again, USP, Butner, and USP Lee. Some of the co-defense. He had 12 people on his case. He's the only one who didn't go to prison. They're all in prison as of now, and it's, it was closed in 2019. Now, what does the kid do? He doesn't lay low. Now, he's a rapper, and he has his image and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, what happened, what, what confused me about the case mostly is they threatened him with all this time, and they do that with everyone. I was facing life in prison. Life, and I didn't tell. 
he was facing 47 years. And when they say facing, with your record, what, what you're going to do, with your what they call points that you're going to get and, and all that kind of stuff, it's going to come down. And again, it's going to go to what they call a sentencing guidelines. And the sentencing guidelines wouldn't have been 47 years, not for a weapons possession, a conspiracy, yes, conspiracy to commit murder, racketeering, but it's still not going to equal 47 years. So did he cave quickly? Usually what happens in these cases, a guy like this will stay tough, they'll stay strong, they'll get convicted. And after they're convicted, they'll end up going and saying to the feds, listen, I can't do this 20 years. I, I want to, uh, you know, do something. What can I do? And the feds will come to him and say, listen, you were a member of the, the nine trays and we want you to, you know, see what information you can give on this guy, that guy, all these other guys. After he's sentenced to 20 years, let's say, and then they get what they call a rule 35. Rule 35 in the federal system is when you're sentenced, you're post-sentenced, you end up ratting. Nobody knows it because you go into the prison, you got 20 years, you're supposed to be this great tough guy, and you're really, you know, snitching on people in prison, you're giving information, you're getting stuff to the feds. What he did was he got what they call a 5K1. A 5K1 is before you're sentenced. And then they reduce your charges through that, and, and it depends on the level of cooperation. Obviously, this kid cooperated a lot. Now, you know, after this kid cooperated, which, listen, I, I don't believe in that. You're in the game, stand strong. And I always say, you know, Ratton is not a guy getting jumped or a guy getting robbed and him going to the police and, and saying, listen, I got robbed or jumped or whatever. I'm not talking about two drug guys in a war or something. I'm talking about a civilian out there. You get robbed, you get uh, jumped, you do something, you call the police, you say, listen, I need, this is what happened, get the guys, pick them out, do whatever. No, these guys were all involved in crime themselves, and he was the first one what they called jump on the bus. Now, I don't know if the other guys could have or would have, uh, but they didn't. It doesn't seem like they did. I don't know the level of cooperation. Maybe some of them did and still are in jail. They weren't as high profile, so we won't know. I would know if I looked at all their paperwork and see what they got in their motions and, and their docket sheet. I can pretty much tell just from their docket sheet. Now, I did a lot of law work in prison, and you know I beat my own gun charge, so I don't know the extent of what they had on them. But I just think it's happened too quickly. So that, you know, always the tough guy persona is questioned. And, and when people come out and they start immediately ratting or doing something like this, that, that doesn't show me any kind of, oh, I was a tough guy. Yeah, the tattoos don't mean shit to me. It don't mean you're tough. I'm tatted up my whole body. It doesn't mean shit. And, and it's, it, it, it's inside what happens inside. Now, here's what this kid does. He gets out of prison last year in 2020. I think it was June or July of 2020. And this year, February, he's in a strip club in Miami. And somebody calls, hey, you rat, motherfucker, whatever. Obviously, it's going to happen. He has to run around with security and stuff because this kid is, is a target now. Obviously, he's a target. This kid was a high-profile kid that just ratted in the... And he ratted on gang members. I don't know where the, the nine trays are or if they're after him or who's after him. You know, the, the Bloods or whoever it is that they're going to, you know, go after this kid. I don't know if this kid could ever really just, you know, live a normal life. But he, a guy calls him a rat, something. He ends up throwing a champagne bottle at somebody, misses the guy, and hits a, hits a stripper. Now the stripper is suing him and is going to make some money. So whatever money this kid has, I don't know how much the lawyers ate up, how much everybody's going to eat up on this kid unless he keeps, you know, becoming the biggest rapper in the world. And it, it really shocks me. Because back in the day with Tupac and all those guys, they were stand-up motherfuckers, you know? Pitbull, a lot of those guys were stand-up dudes. Again, everybody has to live with themselves. Now, as you all know with me, I wouldn't rat. And I had an opportunity to get out in three years and facing life. I ended up doing four 12-year sentences and, and I ended up getting out. And the best thing I ever did was because I got my own integrity. It has nothing to do with the people that I saved. Nothing it has everything to do with who I am. You know, everybody talks about morals with the religion and this shit. That's not. That's my own. That's my own set of values. My own set of I did the crime. I'm going to do the time. I'm not going to bring anybody else into my case just so I can get out and do it. And I had two young ch children and I love them dearly. And I just saw my grandkids. I had a son who was just, just turned seven two days before I was arrested. And I had also a daughter who was 18 months old. So, you know, I look at that and I say, man, if talk and money, I had all that. And it, 
it just so happens that I, it wasn't in me to do. Now, obviously, in today's world, it, it, it's a different world, but it doesn't make it right. Here, this guy gets in another trouble. Right here at UFC 266, last week, couple weeks ago it was, he was at the fight. Now, this guy's going to high-profile events. You don't think he's going to be people who call him a snitch motherfucker or whatever they're going to call him? Of course. Well, somebody, I guess, the water was thrown. This guy throws water or something. He hits other people. Now, you know, who the fuck's he think he is? Because I'll tell you what. That happened to me. I would be a pretty pissed off motherfucker and I might do something. Because who do you think you are? I mean, do you think... You, you just could throw shit and, and hit other people. It's like, what kind of mentality? You got the break of a lifetime, if, if you want to consider it a break. Uh, I Listen, there's predictions. I don't know the predictions in this kid, but I don't know what he's learned. Now, you got to remember, this kid's on five years probation, so I think they're going to be watching him, and I'll bet money these prosecutors said, give him whatever, he's going to be back in fucking jail in no time anyway. That's what they're saying to themselves, because the prosecutors aren't your friend. Trust me, they're not your friend. Uh, they, they're not out to seek, you know, all the best best possible scenario. They, they looked at this kid. They had a five-year investigation on this gang and these people. And, yeah, they got other people. It's kind of like, uh, was he the leader or was he not? And it's funny because, you know, it was like, it reminded me of the Gotti thing with Sammy. And Sammy, you know, got away with a lot of murders and stuff like that. And, again, once you get that break, this guy just... You know, like, fuck you, I got the break. Comes out, spends money, puts it in the faces of everybody. And then he, he fucking is in front of trouble with the law. I'd love to know what he did for his for his thousand hours of community service. It's a lot of fucking hours, people. Thousand hours. There's only 168 hours in a week. 168 hours in a week, in a whole week. Now, what what was his actual fucking, you know, how much community service is he doing? Is he doing it? Are they watching him? I know when I got out, and I still had three years paper. I didn't have community service, but I had organized crime uh, probation people up my fucking ass. I mean, just watching me, doing everything. They didn't give a fuck about Larry Lawton. They were looking to violate me all the time. Matter of fact, I had a good friend of mine, he's a judge, and one of my best friends, Joe, sat me down at a restaurant and said, Larry, you're doing real well, but be careful. Don't even do anything to give them the opportunity to fuck you, you know, because that's what they're going to look to do. They're going to look to violate you to say, look, people don't change. Now, I did change, obviously, but I'm looking at this kid, Takashi 69 and he's a rapper. I don't know his music. I mean, I listen to a couple songs. They're not my style. I don't like them. But that doesn't mean he doesn't have an audience because there is audiences everywhere, whether people just want to follow that or not. Now, how do you re run your life and how do you watch people and what you respect that of a person? I know I get people who still hate me. I get a lot of positive uh, uh, replies and people say I help them and stuff like that. And, but I could stand up and debate or talk to people about my past, about what I believe in and why I want people to change and not follow me. Is this guy being an example for somebody else to say, hey, listen, I made my mistakes now. Fucking don't do what I did. I'm not saying not to live, not to go places, but this kid's a target. It's so fresh. It's so in your face. So is he just putting it in people's faces that, listen, Fuck you, you were in jail. I was the smart one, I jumped on the bus first. Sadly, you know, a lot of young people do think like that and I can't stand that because I'm not into that. I just don't like that. I think that's the wrong thing to do. I look at people like this Takashi 69 and say, this is what the problem is with kids. They don't think or there's no mentors in their life to tell them, hey, listen, you're in this, hey, you wanna be in the game, be in the game. But when you get caught, don't be a fucking person that's like a snitch. But again, I don't know if you can change that or not. I don't know what Takashi 69 is thinking in his head when he goes to bed. I know, you know, I was talking to some people and they say he, you know, he literally has to walk around with ex-police officers and security and stuff like that. Now, you know what's crazy? If this kid doesn't stay on top of the world with his music or whatever he is, he's gonna run out of money if he hasn't already. And, and where is he going to be then? You think people are going to be around just protecting him for nothing? That's not going to happen. But he's living the life. He's going to UFC events. He's going to strip clubs. He's doing his thing. And that that's an insult to people in the game. You know, if I was still in the game, I would be, you know, I, I wouldn't know who he was because that's totally not my... Uh, thing or my era, but if I found out about that and I owned the club, I wouldn't even let him in the club. 
So get the fuck out of here. You know, you ain't bringing no drama or bullshit to my fucking club. And I don't like the, what they did because I'm always a believer in, listen, you do the crime, you do the time. And in his case, more than anything, he wasn't even down to the wire. You know, oh, they're going to threaten you. If people don't know how the feds work by now, if you're in the game and you don't know how the feds work, then you're really just stupid and you don't belong in the game. They're going to threaten you with everything. They're going to tell you this guy's telling you you murdered someone, this one. Yes, this guy's charges, his charges were uh, racketeering, which is they all, they had me under racketeering. And it's going to be a weapons possession and conspiracy to commit murder. That means he didn't do it. That, that means he might have knew about a murder or someone was going to uh, uh, commit a murder. S conspiracy to commit murder. Not that the murder happened and he's part of that. Conspiracy to commit murder means you just knew there was going to be a murder. You maybe were in a meeting with people and you guys said, let's plan on killing this guy. And you didn't say anything. That's really conspiracy. Conspiracy is a very broad charge. The weapons charge is pretty cut and dry. But the weapons charge only carries five years. I mean, for your first crime, it carries five years. And this is federal. Now, this kid was, I told you, arrested by the ATF, NYPD do, and the Homeland Security. Now, was he favorite because uh, uh, he gave so much information? I don't know what exactly he gave up. I don't know who knows it. The people, his co-defendants know it. Everybody knows it, and, and it's gonna get out there. And that's why there's, you know, I read a, a, an article where there's two camps, they call it. There's one, they're all for what he did, and then there's all ones that, that can't stand the fucking guy. Now, obviously, that's a polarizing thing. I don't also personally worry about what people think of me one way or the other. Obvious, he doesn't. But how does he look in the mirror in himself and say, hey, man, hey, I'm going to do a deal with you? Because you know he, his word's no good. I mean, if he wanted to do a deal with anybody, who's going to do that deal with him knowing that he might just say some shit because he getting in trouble again and hey, I got some information on a thing. They didn't do the taxes. They, whatever the fucking deal it is. I, I always look at that and say, you know, how do you want to live your life? You know, I know if I do a deal with a person, it's a verbal deal, it's a handshake deal, and you could go to the bank with that deal. People who know me will tell you that every day. They go, Larry's word means everything. And it does. Maybe it's just the era I come from. But I don't believe that. I deal with a lot of young people right now. And I'm very uh, positive on young people because I see how they're starting to think things through. They're, you know, they, they want to have fun. They want to do the right thing. But don't, you know, they got to think before they act. And if you don't and you make a mistake, accept that responsibility. I kind of almost will blame a little bit out on the government by putting these sentences that are out of whack. And now it's just let's take a kid and let's ruin his fucking life forever. Instead of giving a kid a, uh, you know, a, a decent sentence that's commensurate with the, with the fucking crime he committed. Again, if this guy cut a guy's head off, cut three people's head, and that's a whole different animal. But you're just talking about conspiracy. You know, drive-by shooting could be conspiracy to commit murder. That's a drive-by shooting. Yes, stupid, wrong, can kill somebody, but it didn't. The weapons charge is what these kids are doing. I try to tell young people, fucking, are you nuts? The weapons, that's what the gun, years ago, back in the early 90s and stuff, the, the weapons, and even the mid-90s, guns were the big, big thing you know, getting guns off the streets. You know, in today's world, these guys uh, are being thrown at them with, you know, 100 year sentences. Not, not I was facing life, life. And so I, it was just the way I was and the way I was built and the way I would grew up. And that was look in a fucking mirror. Can you live with yourself? Forget everybody else. I was never worried about someone coming after me and killing me. I was the fucking wild man. Not to say they'll kill you too, don't get me wrong. I was in a, in a rough life. But I look at that and I say to myself, okay, what's wrong with these young people today that they're just quickly either taking that sentence? You know, they threaten them with 47 years and boom, 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 boom. 11 out of the 12 people on his indictment are in jail. He's not. And there's other artists, I think, that, that collaborate with guys like this. And I don't think that's a good move for them. And it's not about you, you don't have to hate them in this, but how do you support them? How does a person's word not count anymore? Whether whoever the, the artist is, how does a person's word not count anymore? And I, I have no problem debating that with anybody or, or discussing that with people. Because I look at life a whole different uh, way. Maybe it's because I'm older and I know I'm coming to the end of my life. But I was 34 years old, 
34 years old when I was, I was actually 33 when I was arrested. I, I was 33, I just turned 34. And I had my whole life ahead of me. I had money, I had children, I had houses, boats, horses, homes, limousines, everything. And you know what? All of a sudden, it's all gone. And I wouldn't cooperate, and what did they do to me? They fucking put me in USP Atlanta. They fucking sent me on fucking what they call diesel therapy. They put me all these places that fucking were the worst of the worst. Because they just fucking knew this guy was a fucking jerk off. They ended up even convicting me five years in prison. They ended up convicting me on... Uh, uh, 18 USC 1001, which filing a false statement to try, try to protect my brother. And they did that. And I, I went above and beyond to try, not just not said anything, I tried to lie to protect somebody. And uh, it, it, it's, you know, they're gonna come after you. They don't want you, they don't like you, they're gonna do what they can to get you. That's just the way the business is today, uh, the feds are. And I, I'm a believer again, I told you, and you guys know how I feel, our whole criminal justice system is broke. It's broke. It's broke from the fucking top down. Uh, it's broke from the sentencing guidelines. It's broke. And I understand why they tried all that shit, but it didn't work. The war on drugs didn't work. You know, the, the fucking draconian sentences don't work. The fucking prison system, which has no rehabilitation, fucking doesn't work. As far as this kid, listen, he come from a rough, rough background, and, and I feel for that. But, you know, there comes a time in your life when you make your own choices and you got to live with the choices you make. Obviously, he don't want to do that. I respect people who understand the game, stay in the game if they want, and I don't suggest anybody ever stay in the game. Please don't stay in the game. Get out of the game, life is too short. This kid is not a great example of what you should do, and I think this kid can't sleep. He's probably fucked up on drugs or whatever. I don't know. I, I just, you know, I look at these things and it's hard for me to, to look at somebody and then either one, feel bad for them, or, to uh, justify what they did, because I can't justify what he did. This kid didn't even wait, didn't even wait until the fucking hammer dropped, or didn't wait right to the end. Maybe he was worried about somebody else jumping on the bus. I don't know, but that's all big excuses. This should be a lesson to all young people out there. You think you're in the game, you think you're a badass, until one of your own friends fucking snitch on you. That's what happens. And it's sad, but it happens. So get out of the game if you're there. I hope you got a, a good perspective on my view of uh, Takashi 69 from a man who did a lot of time, knows the law, changed his life, and now helps a lot of people. I want you to make sure you make a couple of good choices. Now I used to say one good choice a day, make a few. Try to help somebody, you'll be better off for it, and you'll even feel good about yourself. Have a great day everybody, stay tuned, see you soon.